this is such a day of miracles, the Holy Spirit just said. Now, this is the thing the Holy Spirit just said, especially when you leave this location. Especially, ooh, this is such a day of miracles. Mm, 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 mm. Some of you have really been building your relationship with Jesus. Really been building it, building it, building it. And the Holy Spirit say you've just been talking to him more. You've just been, just been talking, just been talking. Ooh, I stood up here and I'm being flooded with just all of this. This is a good flood. Thank you, Father. Yes, my Lord. There are so many blessings in here about to happen for y'all. Oh, my, 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 my. My goodness, goodness, goodness. Some of, some of you, the Holy Spirit said that you have been troubled in your minds. And, and, and it all, it, it's like... Bad things are going to happen. It's, that's just really been on your mind. Things come up and it's just so much negativity that you've been battling back and forth. And the Holy Spirit say, those are all just lies. Those are all just lies. Hallelujah. The devil's been trying to get you to feel down about yourselves, down about your situations, trying to get you to feel like you're really not going anywhere. All he said, those are just lies. Those are just lies. And some of you feel like you're on the down slope, like going towards the end of whatever your life or things just aren't going and just, those are all just lies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Holy Spirit is seven, the de- saying that the devil knows that if he can get you to believe those things, then you won't believe what God is saying. Because you, it's impossible to believe two different things. It's absolutely impossible. Psychiatrists say there's no way to think two things at one time. So it's impossible for us to think Two things at the same exact time. It is absolutely impossible to believe two things. Impossible. So whatever you believe, that's what you'll have. I think it's called the good news version. When Jesus uh, uh, told this person he was praying for, be it unto you according to your faith. And that version says, and I shared it last week, become what you believe. Become what you believe. Mm, 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 mm. So whatever the devil has been bringing to you and the negative stuff, tell him, well, he can't go to hell now because it's not time. Because Revelation says it's going to come. Just tell him to leave you alone. All right, tell him to go. Tell the devil. Tell the devil to go. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him to go. Stop entertaining. Oh, come on in. I was already feeling badly. Come on in. I got some tea and crackers. We just sit here and just have a pity party. Stop. Stop. Stop with all of that. The Holy Spirit just said, stop it on contact. Soon as the thought, "I, I, 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 I don't do you. I'm not doing you today or no other day. That's good, sir. That's good, sir. Go down the street to somebody else who will listen to your foolishness, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, now somebody in here, you didn't take what I just said. But let me, let me, let me say, and it's nothing negative. I just have to teach you further so you'll implement this in your life, okay? The devil comes and he just talks normally. You're not going to make it or look at this, look how this is going, this, that, and that. Why don't we talk back? We need to talk right. back immediately. Talk right. back. Right. Right. Yes, sir. It's like, well, you know, I don't talk to the devil like that. 
But you let him talk to you like that. He talks to you, talk back. Somebody on this side said, well, that's just talking. That's not just talking. Death and life. They are in the power of the tongue. When you talk, you create. You know, now you don't talk so much, you don't create a division between you and this, that, and other. You don't talk so much that you lost your job. You don't talk. Talking creates. You don't talk and create a division. Do the same thing with the devil. Talk and create division between you and him. Devil, get out of here. I'm not listening to you. Just in case you didn't know, devils have assignments. They don't just randomly come upon you. Us. They have assignments. Wow. Oof. I'm going to start doing this. The Holy Spirit said, start treating Every devil, like they are on assignment. Always keep that on your mind. Every time a devil comes and says something, you treat them like they're on assignment. What do you mean, Apostle Wall? Oh, you're coming to make me doubt. You're on an assignment to make me doubt. Oh, my goodness. You are about to get whooped by your supervisor because that's not happening. If you do studies, that there, there are disciplinarians in um, the satanic world. They're disciplinarians. So they have to get you to sin or else they are disciplined. I've done quite a bit of study on stuff because I need to know how to teach you. So I say, ah, you just lost this one. I'm not going to doubt. I believe God. So you just, you just lost you literally lost. Amen. So you might as well go somewhere. I know you're going to try it again even after I finish talking. You're still going to try to plant this thought in my mind. But this ground will not receive your seed. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We got too much fruit and vegetables and, and nuts and berries here. So, you, no, you can't. Mm-mm. We're not receiving any more seeds. Ha, 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 ha. No more, all the hiding places are filled up because his word have I hid in my heart. So I don't have any more room. There's no more hiding space for anything else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody in here, you've really been reading the Bible lately so much more than you had been. And the Holy Spirit just told me to tell you, you've literally crowded out the stuff that was in your heart. The Word of God is coming and crowded it out and has expelled things because you haven't left room for the devil. Keep your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your God. Keep your heart filled with the Word of God. Don't just read it and say, I read it. Read it. Put it in your heart. How do you put it in your heart? Because when you read and you apply it, it's like, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, Lord, I thank you for this. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, I see where I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. Lord, forgive me. That's when you're applying it to your heart. When you make it applicable to your own life. It causes you to say something. causes you to do something. That's when it's a part of your heart. Hallelujah. Never read the word of God unless you're saying, I'm about to do this. Yeah. Ooh, especially when you read it, it makes you pray. Yeah. Oh, Father God, thank you for loving me. Yeah. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, oh, I hope. Let me see. Oh, don't you start nothing in here. I think the Holy Spirit already done started it. I think I might, if y'all would do this for me, Isaiah 41, um, I think verse 10, hallelujah to God. This is totally 
on script. Not, not what I plan, but what the Holy Spirit is doing. Hallelujah to God. Oh, hallelujah. God is so real. Isaiah 41. <laughs> oh, but what happens is whenever we go to the word of God, sometimes it just, it makes you do things. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Oh, no, no, no. It gets better. It gets better. Oh, I don't have the control to do it. But then y'all switch to the next one. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall die, perish. Next verse. Look, now this right here is something. Thou shalt seek them. Those that's coming against you, you're going to be looking for them. Those that your enemies, you're going to look for them. And shall not find them. Even them that contended, those that did fight against you, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Next verse. For the Lord thy God is affectionate. What you mean? Well, hold thy right hand. Why are you holding my hand? Because I'm saying unto thee, fear not. I'll help you. I'll help you. Woo! Fear not. I will help thee. Go back. Anthony, for the Lord thy God will hold, hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand, Lord. I will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not my God next verse fear not thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel be so scary and stuff I will help thee said the Lord and thy redeemer the holy one of Israel oh all we did was read. That's all we did was read. This is how you read. You see how you, you just started praising and glorifying. He's going, I didn't know God said he was going to hold my hand. I didn't know he was going to do that. God actually holds my hand and helps me. All we did was read. That is how you put the word in your heart. So now if, if you happen to go through a situation this afternoon, you'd be like, well, God's holding my hand. That's in my heart. He's holding my hand. He said he's going to help me. Hallelujah to God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for the help. And then, it's God helping. We're talking about God Almighty. When he helps, that's just it. It's over. Oh, my. For the other team. It's over for the other team. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. Whew. I did not expect that. It just, it just comes on you. Uh -huh. All right. Now, for what we're going to talk about today, we're still, of course, in the series 
Hallelujah. Life in the supernatural. And a lot, a whole lot actually, of what Jesus did is referenced by his healing abilities. We can learn major lessons of leadership through the healings and miracles of Jesus and, of course, through his other acts while he was on the earth, which coincide with how he still acts today. How he still acts today. I have something I want to show you. And then I'm going to get back up and just teach something that I discovered. Oof. Something I discovered this week. God is so perfect. Oof. He is so perfect. Amen. It was the morning of September 20th, 2000. It was the morning of September 20th, 2006. Jeff Markin recalls heading for work as usual. What he doesn't remember is driving himself to the hospital. He had called his boss and told him he didn't feel well. His boss was concerned and convinced Jeff to go to the emergency room. Somehow Jeff made it. As he got there, he collapsed. Dr. Chauncey Crandall was doing rounds in the intensive care unit that morning. An alert call came over the PA system uh, that someone had arrived at the hospital with a massive deadly heart attack. And then a second call uh, went out over the PA system and specifically asked for me because I was the cardiologist on that day. When I arrived there, it was like a war zone. It was like being in battle. It was chaos. Everyone there fighting to keep this man alive. The ER staff worked on Jeff for 40 minutes. They shocked him a dozen times. Despite their efforts, there was no response. Once Dr. Crandall decided the team had done everything possible, he called the time of death. While a nurse prepared Jeff's body for the morgue, Dr. Crandall updated the charts. Well, as soon as my note was completed, I walked out through the door to this emergency room. I heard this voice say, turn around and pray for that man. And I wanted to ignore that voice because I said to myself, how can I pray for that man? He's dead, he's gone. There's no life in him. So I kept walking and the voice came back again. And the voice said, turn around and pray for that man. And I stopped and I thought to myself, I need to honor the Lord. So I turned around at the doorway and I walked to the side of the body and the nurse was on the other side of the body and she's looking at me like, what are you doing? Why are you here? And I stood there next to that corpse and I opened my mouth and these words came out. Father God, I cry out for this man's soul. If he does not know you, as his Lord and Savior, Father, raise him from the dead now in Jesus' name. I remember staring at bright lights and they were swirling around. Out of those uh, bright lights uh, came an image and he told me that he was there to look over me and make sure that everything was gonna be fine. And the other doctor walked in the room and I pointed to him, I said, shock this man one more time. And he looked at me, he said, Dr. Crandall, we can't shock him. He's dead, there's no life in him. He's gone. And I said, for me, shock him one more time. And that doctor, out of respect and honor for me, went over to that body with those defibrillator paddles and put his paddles on that patient and shocked him, shocked Jeff. And immediately an instant heartbeat came back. Instant, perfect, regular, which we've never seen before. And the nurse screamed, what have you done? And this perfect heartbeat came back. And then suddenly 
This abdomen started moving and started breathing. And then a couple moments later, the fingers started twitching. They immediately moved Jeff to the intensive care unit. Three days later, Jeff woke up with no evidence of brain or organ damage. Once I, I woke up, my daughter Jillian was there, and that's when she told me what had happened. When I came in Monday morning, Jeff was sitting up in bed. And I said, where, where were you that day that I prayed for you in the emergency room? And he said, Dr. Crandall, I was in total darkness. And I was so disappointed. And I said, Jeff, what were you disappointed about? He said, I was alone for eternity. He asked me at that time if I was willing to accept God, my life, and into my heart. I just opened my arms and accepted God. Uh, it was just a very emotional time. I, you know, I remember you know, crying <laughs> in his arms. Today, Jeff is back at work and gets regular checkups with Dr. Crandall. He still has no heart problems or residual complications from his brush with death. To know what I had gone through and uh, to be so fortunate, and uh, that's been part of, I guess, my uh, daily battle is why me? Why have I been <clears throat> so fortunate uh, to have God shine on me? Uh, I guess a second time. This day that I prayed for Jeff was a day of very little faith. It wasn't one of my big God days. And when I walked into that emergency room, to tell you the truth, I didn't want to stay and pray because I was so much in a rush with my work. But I prayed. And I didn't have a lot of faith backing that prayer up that day. But the Lord asked me to do it, so I honored the Lord and prayed. And that's all we need, just a spark of faith like that mustard seed. Miracles are real, and they're real today. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. God is real. God is real. Now, I showed that for one thing in particular. I, I copied down everything that he said that I, I really need us to pay attention to. This is what Dr. That's Dr. Chauncey Crandall. This is what he just said. This day, please pay attention to this. This day that I prayed for Jeff was a day of very little faith. You heard him just say that. It wasn't one of my big God days. And when I walked into that emergency room, to tell you the truth, I didn't want to stay and pray because I was so much in a rush with my work. But I prayed. And I didn't have a lot of faith backing that prayer up that day. But the Lord asked me to do it. So I honored the Lord and prayed. James 2.26. For as the body without the spirit is dead... So faith without works is dead also. Now, Dr. Crandall obeyed to pray. The result was God's will and also the result was God's doing. Follow me. Dr. Crandall did not have faith for the man to be raised from the dead. But he did have enough faith in God to obey him. He did not have faith that the man would be raised. 
but he had enough faith in God to turn around and obey him, to turn around and go to a room where he himself declared a man dead. Had enough faith to go in there in the presence of somebody. It would have been easy if no one was in there. But in the presence of someone who was washing the man up, getting him ready for the morgue, he had enough faith to pray. John 5, 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. This has been one of our key scriptures here lately. But what he seeth the Father do. Jesus said, I can't do anything unless I see the Father do it. For what thing soever he doeth, whatever God does, these also doeth the Son likewise. Whatever I see my Father do, that's what I do. When we are truly under authority and obey the commands from that authority, all of our words and actions will be backed up by that authority. Chauncey, go pray. How can I go pray to man is dead? Just go pray. You're under my authority. Yes, sir. I'm under your authority. So I'll go pray. I'll do, you command, I'll do it, and you'll back it up because I'm under your authority. All right. Just as Dr. Crandall has hopefully led millions of people because this is it's a viral video, as, as I said. To always obey the voice of the Lord through this viral video, we're also responsible through our actions of obedience to show others what they should do during those circumstances. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. When we do that, we'll show the world leadership via the Jesus style. And today I'm going to be teaching that what we need to do is to lead by obeying. Some people don't obey because they don't have an example. They don't have a model for obedience during critical times. It's hard for me to obey right now. I know I'm supposed to do what's right, but if you don't lead somebody to do it, they may never do it. I would consider myself a leader, as I said last week. Leadership just simply means you have influenced somebody to do something at some point in time in your life. And I'm sure everybody in here has influenced somebody to do something. You are a personal leader and you need to see yourselves as such. How can we win somebody to the Lord unless we lead them to the Lord? Say, I am a leader. I have led and I will lead. That's exactly who you are. And, and most times we don't think about ourselves being a leader. So therefore, our day, as our day goes on, we act as if we're just following Whatever leads. Well, whatever happens, happens. And so what does that mean? I'm going to follow whatever happens. That's not who we are. What if something happens and it's not the will of God? You're going to follow it? Do you know 90% of things that happen in some people's lives, not the will of God at all? How many things have you 
just simply followed because it happened. Well, Lord is taking me through. And God's like, listen to the Holy Spirit. That's not me. Rebuke it. That's not me. Tell it to go. That's not me. Why are you following that? Why are you following that up? Like we like to say, don't, don't even follow her up. Don't, don't, don't follow him up. Why do we do that? Stuff happens and we, oh, well, I guess this is the way I'm supposed to go. No, it's not. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit. What is, wait, wait, wait. This, now I was in prayer and I've been reading the word of God and I really believe God and I uh, uh, have a great relationship. This doesn't feel right. I know sometimes we go through things, but I don't think this is something God wants me to go through. So, Father, I, I need to ask you about this. He's like, finally, somebody's asking me. No, you're not supposed to go through this. Thank you. Now I know what to do. Thank you so much. Then get to it. I, 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 I'm not going through this. The blood of Jesus. Be healed or blood of Jesus. Get out of here or whatever. Everything that happens is not the will of God. So we're going to have to say, I, if, if, it's, if it's just going to be me, I'm going to show people I'm going to obey. I'm going to start a revolution, and I want people to follow me. I'm going to start a revolution. I am going to question whether this is of God or not. I'm going to stop just following stuff. Oh, man. I didn't know I was going to have feelings for her like this. Is this God or is this the devil? Don't follow a thing until you find out. Or is this just me? Just my flesh? Because, you know, if I be honest with myself, no one's been paying me attention lately. So now I'm getting this little bit of attention. And so um, this just might be me. So before I get all caught up, Let me see. Lord, is this me or is this thee? Because, you know, feelings is the, is the number one thing that people follow. Number one thing. Because we think because we feel it. Oh, it's a part of me. Oh, this is real. I feel this. Well, who are you feeling it from? Okay. Mark eleven twenty two, and Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Somebody's like, Where are you going with this? Oh, follow just follow me. We can have faith in God. How? By simply doing what he says. The results are always up to him. We don't have faith for the results. We have faith in the God of the results. Our part is only to obey him. Let me explain that. Because when the Holy Spirit showed this to me, I was, I was on vacation last week, just in Columbia, just chilling. I said, I'm going to have to go on more vacation. Day one of the vacation, God gave me this revelation. Day one, I said, Father, 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 all this long time, all this long time, and I'm just now seeing this. You know, my focus, I'm confessing, and I'm sure there are those of you who've had this same thing. My focus, son, when I go to pray for somebody who's sick, my focus has always been on them getting well. My focus has always been on seeing their condition change. That has always been my focus. And the revelation God gave me was, that's not supposed to be your focus. Like, wait, hold. They shall lay hands on the sick 
and they shall recover. I mean, you said that. Yes. But we're only supposed to focus on doing what he said. Don't focus on the results. They lay hands on the sick. The recovering part is up to me. Be healed in Jesus' name. Then look, how does it feel now? All I told you to do was lay hands. I take over after you obey. Dr. Crandall's like, how can I go in there and pray? The man is dead. All I said was pray. You don't worry about the raising part and all what's going to happen next. Only focus. Lead by obeying. I said, I have always focused on the condition being bettered. The condition being 100% whole again. No, 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 no. Jesus simply did what he saw the Father do and the results came. Oh, this is really, really, really going to take a lot of stress off of us ministering to people. Because our focus has been on the results. When our focus should only be on obeying God. Think about it. Jesus told a man to stretch out. uh, uh, Stretch out his hand. And the hand was healed. Jesus just did his part. He just told the man to stretch out his hand. That's all he did. Jesus obeyed and the father healed the man's hand based on the obedience of Jesus. Ah, some of y'all are like, I'm still trying to get it. Don't worry, you will, I promise. Jesus told another man to take up his bed and walk. That's all he did. Take up your bed and walk. And as the man acted in obedience, the father healed him. Somebody said, see, that's where I'm having a problem. You keep saying God healed him. And I always looked at it as when Jesus told him to do something, he healed him through that. Oh, oh, okay. Jesus touched a dead girl and said, little girl, arise. That's the interpretation. His literal words were to leave Kumi. He obeyed what the father wanted him to do. And the father raised the little girl. You see, the father is the one. Oh, we're supposed to be like Jesus in that we obey. Oh, I just love this because y'all still waiting. They're like, I'm still trying to get it. This will help you get it. John 14, 10, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. All I do is obey. I only do what I see my Father do. That's all that I do. I see my Father do this, and so I do this. Lay hands, lay hands. Speak, speak. We've been focusing on the works that the Father's supposed to do. All we're supposed to do is obey. Just obey. And a lot of times we don't obey. A lot of times we don't pray for the sick or we don't witness. Why? Because we're thinking about the results. What if I pray for them and it doesn't work? The, the, that part isn't up to you. That's why you feel funny about that part. What if I witness and they, that's why you feel funny about that part. Because that's not your part. Yeah. 
I mean, what if I go and mention this to them and they look at it? See, you stop. Stop right there. I just said go mention it. The next part is mine. We think too much. God's like, I've already put all the thought needed into what I told you to do. Go pray. Uh, Dr. Chauncey Crandall. Then he goes to thinking, well, how am I going to pray for that? Oh, my goodness gracious. The man is dead. How am I going? Will you just do what I said? Just do what I said. Stop thinking about the results. I only want, I showed that whole video just to make the point. He said, I did not have a lot of faith that day. Because he was looking at the results. But he did, as I said, have enough faith to obey. And that's all we're supposed to do. Moses, stretch out your rod. You hear it to see. Y'all can't swim in that. Stretch out your rod. All he did was obey. Ooh, Holy Spirit just said, we have chosen to disobey because we think the results are beyond our control. I hope I can remember it then. <laughs> we have chosen to disobey because the, re- the results, we believe the results are beyond our control. We are a result-focused citizen, but we are citizens, result-focused citizens in the kingdom of God. When we should be God-focused citizens. I only do what I see my father do. I'm not thinking about the results. When is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? That's not in my job description. My job description just says obey what God says do. That's it. Whatever happens after that is up to him. Mm -hmm. The secret to faith is full obedience. Only focused. Only focus on doing the part you're told to do. Adding or subtracting nothing. Just do it. Witness to that person in front of you. You look at them. Oh, I don't know. They gonna pop up. I just said witness. That's all I said. Leave the rest up to me. As a matter of fact, Holy Spirit just said this. I gave you the simple part of the whole deal. All I said was lay hands. That's simple. All I said, Chauncey, is to go back and pray. That's all I said. Do pray. I gave you the easiest part of the whole thing. Witness. Talk to them about Jesus. That's simple. You can't save them. The hard part is mine. You can't convict their heart. That's my part. All I said was talk. But, ooh, gracious day. In Genesis, I gave you dominion on the earth. So guess what? If you don't do your part, I can't do my part. If you don't witness, I can't convict. If you don't pray, I can't heal. I gave you the easiest thing to do and you still won't do it because you're so result focused instead of me focused. Jesus focused on me. I, did, I see my father doing it, so I'm going to do it. I see my father spitting, making mud, put on the man's eyes. All right, go wash. What? Hey, that's what I saw my father do. So I'm just doing what I saw him do. The result is up to him. That's it.
We obey simply because God told us to do it. We are under his authority. How refreshing it is to just know that all I have to do is what he says. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes when God gives me a name of somebody that I don't know, and I'll say, is anybody in here know somebody named so-and-so? And what I see is they have two kids, or I, I see this, or whatever. All I'm doing is obeying. Got to speak a name. And so I'll say, who knows this name? I could say now, nah, that is an odd name. We don't have, now, if we had like a thousand people in the church, then it would be a pretty good chance that this name somebody would know, but I don't know. I can't go through all that. It's just do it. Somebody is sick. So what happens? I just see the Lord say, just wave your hand. I mean, wave my hand. People are going to think, oh, he's trying to be dramatic. I can't go through all those. I can't go through all of that. All we are supposed to do is obey. obey. That's it. I said, Lord, this is a short message. He said, exactly. I was like, this was quick. I got to the end and, and I had more and stuff. He said, no, 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 no. Next Sunday. Okay. All right. Because, see, I like to, I, I milk until it's dry. He said, put some more milk for next Sunday. Put it in the refrigerator and wait for next Sunday. I said, all right, all right, I will. So now we know what to do. And now we'll be more apt to do it. Because, oh, the results. I've been looking at the results. How many of you will say you've been doing that? I put both my hands. I confessed already. And I got a half stand up on it as well. I promise you, I have. And now, it's going to be easier to obey. It's going to be so much easier to obey. This is what God said to do, so I'm just, I'm just going to do it. And the Holy Spirit just said, and, 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 and the reason why, well... Let me bring it out like this. When we do it, don't, don't look for the results to be a particular thing. Even though we know God is the one who's going to bring the results, we can still get in that mindset like, okay, I know God, God is the one that's going to do the results, so I'm just going to do my thing. But then we're still going to say, okay, now let me see what God's thing. See, God, don't do that. Don't focus on his thing at all. Just focus on your thing. Like my father always says, I got me. We go out to eat and he goes get his place. I got me. I don't know about y'all, but I got me. That's what we need to say. I got me. I, I did what you said do. I don't know if y'all know this old song. Good Lord. I done done good long. Y'all don't know it. I done done good long. I done done. I done done what you told me to do. Good Lord. Ha. I done done good long. I done done good long. Come on. I done done, I done done what you told me to do. All right now, that's it. I thought y'all were old heads. Y'all didn't, y'all don't know that song? Come on. You're not, you're not looked at y'all first because y'all know all the old <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's, that's, what, that's the way our hearts, our hearts should be focused like that. All right, Lord, good Lord. 
I done done. I done done what you told me to do. I done for, I forgot the verses, but it's something like, you told me that something, 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 something. I done done what you told me. You told me to go and give my life. I done done what you told me to do. You told me to read your word every day. I done done what you told me to do. And you told me to treat my brother and sister right. I done done what you told me to do. Oh, y'all, y'all professionals now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you and bless you. We praise you, Lord God, for your power. We praise you for your love. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for giving us of yourself. Thank you, oh God, for giving us your word. Father, right now, we repent, Lord God, even though we didn't know, now we know you, you, you've been telling it to us, but we didn't quite see it like this. We always knew to be obedient. We always knew to witness and to lay hands and to rebuke and to do all the things that you commanded us to do. But Father, we didn't realize that some of what we were doing was trying to put our faith in results and not our faith in you. So Father, we thank you for correcting us. Because now we're correct. Now we're correct. And we know what to do. And we look forward. We look forward to what you're going to continue to teach us. As we obey, Lord, we're under your authority. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Thank you for it all. We give your glory, praise, and honor. We're going to obey you. We look forward to it now. Father, if you've had a problem with us witnessing or whatever, now you won't forgive us, Lord. Now we see what was holding us back and causing us to think too much. We're going to obey and we're going to be prompt to do it. Hallelujah. So, Father, give us the greatest sensitivity to your Holy Spirit that we can have. The greatest sensitivity that we can have to your Holy Spirit. So we will not miss your leading. And we will lead. We will show others through our testimonies, through the very things, the actions of obedience. We will show people what they're to do in those situations, and we will lead by obeying because that's what Jesus did. He led by obeying. He taught, this is what I'm doing, I'm obeying. And he told the disciples and left it written for all of us to see, for all of us to read, that we are to obey by, lead by obey. So, Father, we thank you and bless you and praise you and give you glory and honor. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Is there anyone here not saved? Or you want to bring your life back to oneness with God? Maybe you left God and you... Need to come back? Is there anyone here? I'd like to pray with you. Anyone here not saved? Raise your hands. If you're not here, I mean, if you're here and you're not saved, or you want to give your life to God, you want to renew that relationship, anyone? If not, I'm going to pray with those who are listening and watching. Maybe there's someone viewing and you don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior and Lord. Uh, Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I come before you right now by Jesus Christ who died for me 
and you raise him from the dead. Lord, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Save my heart. Save my soul. Save my life. I want to be saved. I need to be saved. And Father, I receive you. Jesus, I receive you. Holy Spirit, I receive you. Thank you for forgiving me, Father. Thank you for saving me. My life belongs only to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to do what I saw the Father just as I was ending the prayer. I saw this congregation do something. I wasn't thinking about the congregation when I was praying. And so that is one way you'll know. That's how I always know. That it's a vision from God because I'm not thinking about it. And then it just comes to me. Everyone in here, hold somebody's hand. Everybody in here, hold somebody's hand. Now, you don't need to know, as the Holy Spirit was telling me as the prayer was ending, for those who just gave their hearts to the Lord. You don't need to know what your brother or sister, husband, wife, your neighbor, whoever is by you. You don't have to know what they're going through to pray for them. Ah. <laughs> At the beginning, when I, when I first got up, I said there were so many blessings in here. So many blessings. So many blessings. The Holy Spirit just revealed to me, this is how they're going to be released. Hallelujah. Right here, by you praying. Begin to pray now for the person whose hand you are. I don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit does. Just pray for them. The words that you speak are enough, the Holy Spirit says. And I pray for those who are listening and watching right now. And I bless you, Father God, for their lives. I thank you for opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings that they will not have room enough to receive. And I thank you, Lord God, for the overflow. Thank you for the overflow of blessings because uh, there is at least one person I know that's watching and they have children. There are four children there, four children there. And the overflow is because, you, hallelujah, you'll be able to be a blessing to those children. You're a single mother. You have four children. And God blesses you now. And Father, I bless you. I thank you. I glorify you. I honor you for how perfect you are. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified in and through their life. There are healings taking place in here right now. People's bodies are being healed in here right now. Stiff joints are loosening in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Father. Throat, something going on with your throat, throat pain. Being cured by the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Somebody been having chest pains, the Lord touches you now. Jesus. Headaches. Somebody right on the top of top of your head. Right on the top of your head, there's been some type of irritation or discomfort. You be healed. You be healed. You're healed by Jesus. Ha ya 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 ya. Glory to your God. If you need the doctor to verify it, go get the doctor to verify. Oh, God. You're working, you're working, you're working. Somebody, you, 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 you have a headache in your uh, forehead area and your temple area. Being healed. Shoulder pain. Be healed in Jesus' name. Shoulder be healed. 
Father, I ask right now that you do a full body scan on everyone. Do a full body scan of healing by your might and power. Those here and those listening and watching, do a full body scan and heal whatever is needed to be healed, Father. Be glorified. Jesus healed all. I believe you can heal all. We ask it all and pray and believe it. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and praise God for the blessings. Hallelujah. Bless the Shakaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Amen. God bless you.